Hello everyone, my name is Kodamore and welcome to episode number 14 of Creating a Space Shooter with Godot. So we've got our meteor on screen, except our meteor can just hit our player and nothing happens. So we want our meteor to actually deal damage to our player. In order to do that, of course, our player is going to need some amount of health, some amount of life. So at the top of the player script, we'll create an export variable. I'm going to call it life, which is just going to be an integer. And we'll let the player have three lives to start the game. And once this reaches zero or below, then the player dies and you lose the game. So we also want a way for things to actually damage our player. So we're going to make a function in this player script to actually perform any damage that something might want to do. So we'll have a function called damage that'll take in some amount of damage, which will be an integer. And all we're going to do is subtract that amount from our life variable that we created. All right. So our meteor can call this and damage the player by one or two or something, and that'll just subtract it from its life. And of course, if our life is less than or equal to zero, if we died, then for right now, we'll just print out player died. That's just going to be temporary because we don't have a way to actually show that to the screen yet. And then we'll also queue free our player. We'll make the player disappear. I'm also going to print the current amount of life left in our player whenever this damage function is called. So after we subtract from our life, we're going to print player life equals, and then I'm going to use something called a formatted string. I'm not here to explain all the intricacies of it, but basically, a formatted string is where you use a placeholder inside of your string, which is this percent %s here thing, which means, hey, we're going to replace this with some value. And then you specify the value you want to replace it with after the percent sign and then whatever variable or value you want after your string. Okay, cool. So if we run the game, we're not going to have any differences because nothing is actually damaging our player. So let's go into the meteor here. And here's our meteor. I've just turned off the collision shape and visibility notifier because it bothers me. We want to listen for whenever something enters this meteor, and when it does, we want to damage it if it's the player. So on our meteor area 2D, we'll go up to the node tab, and we want to listen for when another area 2D enters this meteor area. So we're going to double click the area entered signal, and we'll create a function inside of our meteor, like so. So now in our meteor script, we have this new function that is attached to our area 2D. We have to check if that area was the player, and if so, damage the player. There's a couple of different ways that we can try to do this. The first is to use a group. Remember, with our meteor here, we added it to the damageable group. We could do something similar and add the player to a player group. But the other thing we can do is go into the player script, and we can actually give the player class a name. So at the top of the player script, we can type class underscore name, and we'll call this class player. Now, in our meteor here, whenever something enters this media area, we can simply check if the area that entered our, our area here is a type of player. Then we know the area is a player, and we can do area.damage, and we can damage the player by one. And that's one completely valid option that's nice and easy. So if we run the game here, and we keep an eye on the printouts down here, You'll notice that right as the uh, meteor overlapped my ship, we got player life equal to 2 because the meteor damaged my player by 1. So, at least that system is working. Basically, whenever something enters the meteor's area 2D here, whenever it enters this area, this area entered signal is emitted. And that means it's going to call our function in the meteor script right here. And if the area that entered our meteor is a type of player, Basically, if whatever script was attached to the area here has a class name of player, which our player does, then we know it is a player and we can call our damage function that we have on it. Otherwise, it's just not going to do anything for anything else that enters the meteor's area, like another meteor or something. So currently, of course, it looks pretty bad. I mean, we just kind of get a printout saying, hey, the player lost a life as it passes over us. And then if we enter it again, again, and if we enter the area again, we eventually die and our player completely disappears from the screen. Now, of course, this brings up an issue. Let's say we have our player here, and our player gets onto the meteor, 
you'll notice that it said print out life equal two. But if we just stay on the meteor, we're going to keep not losing life, even though we're literally hovering underneath the meteor. So I want the meteor to keep dealing damage for as long as it is in contact with my player. So to do that, we'll go into the meteor script here, and we, baf and we basically have to store whether or not the player is currently in our meteor area. So to do that, we're going to need some form of variable, which is going to be player in area, and that is going to be an instance of our player, and we'll set that equal to null to begin with. And basically, whenever the player enters our meteor area, instead of just damaging it, we're simply going to set player in area equal to area, because we know it's a player. And then we're going to unset that once the player leaves our meteor area. So we'll click on our meteor node, and we'll connect the area exited signal into our meteor script. So now we have this function here. And we're going to do the same thing. If the area that exited our meteor's area is a player, then we'll set player in area equal to null. So why are we doing this? Well, it's because up here, we're going to create our process function, func underscore process. And inside of here, we're going to say if the player in area is not equal to null, meaning our player is inside of this meteor area, then we want to damage it. So player in area dot damage, and we'll damage it by one. Now we're going to get a drastically different effect. The second that our, our player ship touches the meteor, boom, we lose our life almost instantly, and then we die. And that's exactly what we want. Our meteor, as long as it's in contact with our player, should be damaging the player. Now, of course, the first time it damages it, we're going to want our player to have a shield. So that's what we're going to implement in the next episode. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next episode.